been unoccupied for a few decades. So we came back to the farm and for the last few years have been in the process of trying to renovate that farm and get it back to its status as a working farm. And uh, we're slowly making some progress, but there's a lot more to do. And um, although we're based at the farm, the farming is certainly a big part of our business. Our primary business activity is in the kitchen. We're more of a culinary business than we are a, a commercial farm. You know, everything that we had been doing up, up until then was pretty local. And we said, oh, we're not quite ready to take the show on the road yet. You know, we're, we're like fixing up the farm and everything, but we'll be ready maybe you know, like next year. And they were just like, no, you're ready right now. Like you, you just have to, there's never going to be a time in your mind when you're sort of like, oh yeah, everything is perfectly in place and we're ready to take the next step, you know? So right, that was pretty good because we just sort of said, okay, like we'll try this thing out and, um, you know, we'll try a couple uh, things on the road and it was crazy. It was like immediately we just kind of had this following and it sort of took off from there. Right. Do you think you take anything from your childhood into seeing, you know, someone enter the program and their growth throughout that process? How rewarding is that to you? Oh, goodness. Um, it is so transformative. I think that um, we tell our students that they change us more than we ever hope to change them. Um, they're their investment in our life is such a blessing. And then we get to share what we hope they will take on into their lives. Um, we are a family, so my parents will come in and volunteer. My brother's involved. Um, so it, it's something that they see family interacting and then they'll call, they'll call my dad pops. And <laughs> so there's those relationships. Um, many of our students have not had family, good family relationships, uh, either by, um, choices that they have made or just even the family structure itself. And so being able to share my family with them has been very powerful. What would you tell an entrepreneur in, App in Appalachia or any rural community? What qualities uh, that they would need to, you know, not only start their business, but to be successful? I definitely think drive, um, being willing to work for your dream, to work long hours. You're, you're not going to be able to hire everybody. Uh, you, you probably are not going to have all the resources you need day one to work with what you have, where you are. Um, to understand that dreams take time to develop and to not be afraid of that. Um, paper is free, pretty much. You can write it down and it may come out five years from now to be patient in the development, but to always be pressing forward at the same time. And sometimes it's very hard because um, things that we had hoped would take place earlier has taken many years. A fact that's not very well known is that African Americans are dying from opioid overdose addiction at a much higher rate than Caucasian in West Virginia. And that's not known. And so it sort of creates a perfect storm, really, for the continued downward spiral of the neighborhood. So we started looking at what could we do in terms of shaping public policy. And uh, that's an area where I have a lot of interest in my organization, Hope CDC. So we started to look at trying to take a rate, lead role, working with legislators. Can we draft public policies that could uh, possibly create pilot projects for the west side of Charleston? Fantastic. So what's it like personally for you to witness, uh, you know, some of these individuals that go through the programs? It's been tremendously uh, rewarding because, as you know, this is just hard work. And some of these communities where there are not a lot of resources, people's spirits have been broken. Uh, they've been uh, disappointed so often and so frequently by those that they elect to uh, political office who haven't delivered. Uh, many feel like they've been economically exploited because there's uh, no real commitment to economic reciprocity. These poor communities become what I call economic transfer centers, right? And money just transferred that through them uh, back into the economy and back into the hands of uh, the larger businesses. So for me personally, I, I've been at this uh, for 25 years, and uh, those early years were very dry in terms of not really seeing much progress of movement made. But over these last uh, 10, 11 years with Tuesday Morning Group, we've made progress, and we actually can see, right, this vision that we had, that we'll be able to uh, mobilize community residents to engage with us, that we'll be able to influence public policy uh, at the local, county, and at the state level. We, we got a building in Richwood for less than $10,000 that was ready 
to move in. You know, we're able to try a whole bunch of experiments in there. So I, I work during the day writing software, and then at night we're teaching classes and um, trying to teach other people how to work as independent consultants in, in technology. And um, if you don't have to go to work, Richwood's an awesome place to live. Right. So how big is your space? So the space that we have right now is about 2,000 square feet, but we just bought another building down the street that's 27,000 square feet. It's four stories. I mean, we're not going to fill the whole thing, but... So tell me about the boot camp. So our boot camp is, we do a 12-week boot camp. We offer it for no charge. And uh, we probably get about 60 people to that start. And then mm, probably 20-ish people come through the middle and about 12 will graduate. That seems to be the trend. So really what we're doing is we're trying to discover people who are interested in it, um, who we can you know, uncover that diamond in the rough, say, and then put them into um, an internship position or hopefully maybe get them making more money in their existing job. We've had a lot of people who come and they just want to learn a little bit more about computers or tech or how to write code. Um, so we expose them to a lot of different things. So those all 40 are in West Virginia? Yeah, we only work in West Virginia. Um, you know, the way the pilot programs are set up, um, you know, we only work with license holders in the state of West Virginia. So uh, I do have colleagues in, in many other states. Um, uh, I run the state's uh, Hemp Industries Association. So, you know, that spans the whole country, a national organization. And so, you know, we do have a lot of counterparts in, you know, PA, Virginia, Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee, Colorado, uh, Vermont. So we work with a lot of different people, uh, but mainly focus on, on farming in West Virginia. What kind of products are made from hemp? Uh, you know, hemp is notorious for being very versatile. Uh, you know, they say you can make 25,000 different products out of hemp. That's probably true. Um, you know, but we start with the base raw materials. So... Uh, you know, the grain for food products, uh, you know, hemp seed oil is used not only in food, but also body care, cosmetic, et cetera. Um, same with the extracts, cannabidiol is a, a really uh, kind of up and coming um, supplement product. That's CBD oil? CBD, right. So, you know, it's kind of most, most of its notoriety comes from its use uh, from treating child epilepsy, it really helps with seizures, you know, really does a lot of different things for the body. Um, it's becoming more explored by the medical community now that, um, you know, hemp is legal to, to grow and to produce in the United States. Uh, so we focus on producing biomass for processors uh, who do CBD production. Um, and then the fiber is, is really, um, you know, the really versatile piece of this. I mean, you can make so many different things out of this fiber. Historically, it was used for textile and rope and sail and shipbuilding and things like that. And, and now, you know, again, applying new age technology to this old age crop, we can do so much more with the fiber now than was ever done with it before. So there's thousands of opportunities um, and, and for the fiber production. 